Good night, everyone. Oh, wait. It's morning. I'm so glad it's summer. It's spring. It's really nice to live in Australia. Wait, we live in America. I'm so confused. It's probably because everything's upside down. What do I mean? Everything's upside down this month in Sunday school. The month of April, our theme is upside down. Jesus changes everything. And he does. It's so awesome. So this month, we're talking about humility. That's our special word that we're going to learn about. And humility is when you put others before yourself. Before what you think you deserve, you give them. So I have some people with me to show us how that works. So first, here's you. This is you. You look so nice. Go you. Awesome. So you're at a birthday party. And at this birthday party, they're handing out some really awesome chocolate cake. Who loves chocolate cake? Raise your hand. I do. I love chocolate cake. So they're handing out chocolate cake to you. And you get the first piece. You have two options. You could start eating that chocolate cake right away because it looks so good and you're so hungry. And who doesn't want to eat chocolate cake? It's delicious. Or you could pass the piece along to someone else so they could start eating. So what you do is pass your piece to this girl. You give her chocolate cake before yourself. And then you get another piece of chocolate cake. They keep passing them out. You have another piece. And you think, this is my time to eat it. I can't wait. This is so good. But these people don't have chocolate cake yet. So you pass it along to them. And you finally get your piece. And you start eating it. And it's great. And that's what humility looks like. It looks like we put somebody else before ourselves. And it's a really hard thing to do. Humility is probably the most upside down thing ever because we always wanna put ourselves first, right? When I get chocolate cake, I wanna eat it first. I don't wanna pass it along to someone else. I wanna enjoy that cake because it tastes so good. So this month, we're talking about how Jesus changes everything. And I'm so glad he does. He, his love means that we get to be free and forgiven every single day. It's so awesome. So. As we've been making our way through the Bible this year at Sunday School, we've noticed that not everyone likes Jesus, especially the religious leaders in the Bible, right? They do not like his message. They do not like him, and they want him to be quiet. They want to silence Jesus. And that's not something we want, right? We want Jesus to keep talking, keep telling us all about the great things that he does. And so, the religious leaders spent months plotting to silence Jesus, but none of their plans had been successful. In fact, Jesus had become the most popular person ever. I mean, just last week, they had a parade with him. They praised him, and they yelled things like, Hosanna, we love you, you're so cool. They were so happy to see Jesus. So for this story today, I'm going to need some help with sound effects. Okay, so I need you at home when I ask you to, to make some sound effects for me. Do you think you can do that? Awesome. I'm so excited. So our story starts with Jesus in a garden, praying. And his disciples were with him. So he told his disciples to go sit down while he prayed and keep watch. Just see if anybody else came to the garden. Let him pray alone. Let him talk to God. So Jesus prayed to God and he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus was starting to get nervous about dying on the cross. So he was asking God, do I really have to die? Is this really important? Do I need to do this? And he went back to his disciples, and they were all asleep. Do you think you can make sleeping sounds for me? Maybe some snoring? Let me hear it. That sounds awesome! Great job. So Jesus must have been so annoyed, right? He comes back and they're all asleep. So he asked them, why couldn't you stay awake? All you're supposed to do is pray and watch. That's all I'm asking from you. Just stay awake. So Jesus left them again to go pray. And he prayed, Father, 
if this cup cannot pass, I will drink of it. Jesus was saying that he was willing to die for us, that he was scared, but he was going to do it anyway because he loves us so much. So Jesus walked back to the disciples again, and they were sleeping again. Do you think you can make more sleeping sounds for me? I want to hear a really good snore now. That's awesome. So Jesus left them again to go pray. And he told them again, you guys got to stay awake. Come on. So he came back to the disciples after praying and told them to get ready. He told them that he was about to be betrayed. What do you think being betrayed means? <sighs> That's a pretty big word. If you want to take some time to talk to your family about what that word means, go ahead and pause the video and do that. So betrayal is when someone who is your friend does something against you without you knowing. They betray you when they plan to hurt your feelings. Betrayal does not feel nice. It hurts us. So the crowd approached Jesus, and they were not happy. What do you think an unhappy crowd sounds like? Do you think you can make noises like that? Maybe you can make like a really mad face. Maybe you have your fist in your air, just yelling. Thanks for doing that. So one of the disciples, Judas, came up to Jesus and he kissed him. And this was the way that he was telling the rest of the crowd which one they were supposed to arrest. So that was really important. And so Jesus asked the crowd, why are you attacking me now? You had so much time before. I was on the streets performing miracles. I was in the churches teaching people, but now you decide to attack me? In this garden at night when I'm praying? And then all of Jesus' disciples left him. All his friends left him. They ran away. They fleed from the scene. And so the crowd took Jesus away. They arrested him. I want you to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down with how that, that story makes you feel. Does it make you feel happy or does it make you feel sad? It makes us feel sad, right? We don't like that Jesus was taken away. He was arrested. It doesn't make us feel good. But Jesus has a lot of humility. He chose to put everyone else in front of him. He could have said, no, 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 I'm not going to die. I'm going to do what I want to do. But he didn't. He said, I'm going to die for these people. I'm going to die for everyone in the whole entire world. Even if they don't love me, I love them. That's how humble he is. That's how much humility he has in his heart. And we get to do a similar thing that Jesus does. We don't have to d die on a cross for people like he did, but we get to choose to put other people in front of us. We get to choose to pass along that chocolate cake instead of eating it first. And there's a lot of ways that we can show humility. We can be humble. So I want you this week to find one way to be humble, one way to put someone else before you, to think of someone else before you think about yourself. It's really hard to do. So maybe it's something that you can talk to your family about, one way that you can do it. Because being humble is not something we're good at, but that's okay because Jesus loves us anyway. And he died for us. He loves us so much, and I'm so thankful for that. So let's close in a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for choosing us. Thank you for dying for us. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.